Aquinas analyzes a number of the different names of the Holy Spirit. So sometimes, of course, we call the third person of the Holy Trinity the Holy Spirit, but also he can be called the love of the Father and the Son and also the eternal gift of the Father and the Son. When he looks at Holy Spirit, Aquinas asks a question that's somewhat obvious, which is, if the Father is holy and the Son is holy and the Father is immaterial and the Son is immaterial, therefore spiritual, why do we call only one person the Holy Spirit? And he notes that there's a certain way in which naming the third person according to that shared attribute designates in, an, in a discrete way that he's derivative of the Father and the Son. So if the Father and the Son are eternally holy, and if the Father and the Son are eternally spiritual or immaterial, then to say that the third person who proceeds from them is the Holy Spirit is to denote that he's the one who comes forth from they who are holy and who are spiritual. Now, that's not a demonstration of like a, why we have to call the third person the Holy Spirit. It's, it's actually going the other way. Given that we call the third person the Holy Spirit and that we derive from Scripture that he proceeds from the Father and the Son, it's an argument from fittingness. There's a certain fittingness in thinking about him as the eternal Holy Spirit, the one who is the immaterial procession of holiness from the Father and the Son. This is then uh, perfected when you add the notion of eternal spirated love. The Holy Spirit is the love of the Father and the Son. The idea of the Holy Spirit as love is, is complicated and really beautiful. So on the one hand, the Father, uh, in begetting the Son, eternally as his wisdom, loves the Son and loves himself in his own infinite, immutable, eternal, and perfect goodness. So in loving himself and in loving the Son, the Father spirates the Holy Spirit as the eternal love that is, as it were, the expression or the, the procession of divine uh, love as life. And uh, you could say the, the love of the Father rests upon the Son or proceeds through the Son, and through the Son, the Father loves the world He creates and so forth. But the other side of this is that the Son, who receives all things from the Father, also has in Himself the plenitude of the divine life, and He eternally loves the Father. Okay, so the Father eternally loves the Son, and the Son eternally loves the Father, and it's this mutual love. Aquinas talks in some way about the sort of mutual impression of love in the Father and the Son for each other that is the third person who is the Holy Spirit. He's the eternal love that proceeds forth from the Father and the Son as the mutually inhering in uh, love that they share as the expression of their oneness of being as the one God, uh, as the Father begets the eternal wisdom who is His Word and loves Him, and the Word who is begotten loves the Father, so the love that is the Holy Spirit comes forth from the Father and the Son as the eternal expression of their love. And that brings us to the third idea, which is the Holy Spirit is gift. The, the amazing thing about the idea of the Holy Spirit here is that the Holy Spirit is a person who is love. And this is a mystery of receiving one's entire being, the Father and the Son give all that, all that the Holy Spirit is to the Holy Spirit as the expression of the Father and the Son. So everything that's in God the Father as God, everything that's in the Son as God, is in the Holy Spirit as God. But it's only the Holy Spirit who has uniquely received in the Holy Trinity. The Father uniquely gives. The Son give, both receives being from the Father, receives His generated identity from the Father and gives to the Holy Spirit. And, only the, and the Holy Spirit alone receives. If the Father is the unique principle without a principle, the Holy Spirit is the unique derived principle. The derived person of the Holy Trinity. So it's right to call him the eternal gift of love of the Father and the Son. And the three persons dwell within each other. We call this the perichoresis based on a Greek expression. There's mutual adherence in which each person is holy within the other. There's nothing in the Father alien to the Son or the Spirit. There's nothing alien. There's nothing in the Son alien to the Father and the Spirit. There's nothing in the Spirit alien to the Father and the Son. But there's this distinction because of the three processions and the Holy Spirit is understood as the, the recipient. And this sort of, in a way, way you, it's wrong in a way to say the culmination of Trinitarian life because that would denote a sort of story. And there's no history or chronology. But there's a kind of a perfect expression of the Father and the Son in the divine love that is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, eternal love, gift that's eternal of the Father and the Son.